My name is Green and welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft. We are starting here at the Elytra course because I was really hoping that there'd be a few more diamonds in here, but nothing, unfortunately, since the last time. So, to give you guys a bit of an update, last episode, literally all of my diamonds, over four stacks of them, vanished from my ender chest, and I'm down to just two diamonds. That, that's like having two pennies to rub together in this game. Everything's expensive. I'm not sure what's happened. Apparently there's absolutely nothing wrong with my ender chest, so there's a chance maybe I just left them somewhere and took them out and I don't know. I've really, I've looked everywhere. I cannot find them. But I'm not going to worry about it. There's always ways to get diamonds back, but this is a little bit annoying. It's a little bit frustrating. My diamonds are missing, but as I was flying around the Hermitcraft server, as I normally do, yeah, I saw this thing. And I've asked several hermits what this is, and none of them seem to know. It looks really suspicious. I think that's probably about the most suspicious thing I've ever seen floating around, apart from the giant cookie. So I thought maybe it wouldn't hurt at the start of this episode to take a look inside. There's no... There's nothing in the blast furnaces. There's just... There's just redstone components. I was really expecting this to blow up. I, I don't know what it is, but I was expecting it to just blow up. Maybe this is something to do with cherry and it's like a advertising campaign? I really don't know. Well, that was uh, uneventful. I was expecting it to probably explode because, I mean, like I said, it looks very suspicious. So that was really nothing in the end. However, there is something very exciting that I want to show you all. And it is this. What is that? It is a poisonous potato. And this is going to be the worst thing that a hermit can come across. Why? Because I am inventing a brand new game. That's right. Tag is almost coming back. So the tag game ended a long time ago because the hermits got sick of it. So I'm making a new one and it's all to do with this poisonous potato. And here is how it works. This is the hot potato. And the idea is to get this item into somebody else's inventory without them knowing. But here's the twist. You can rename the hot potato to include a punishment. For example, give Green 10 diamonds. So I find someone AFK, I drop the potato in their inventory, and I leave. They then find the potato and they see it in their inventory and it says give Green 10 diamonds. They've then been given the hot potato and they have to do what it says, no matter what it says. So they give me the diamonds and I make a profit and I run away. But here's the catch. If they catch me giving them the potato or trying to sneak it in, then the punishment backfires and I have to give them 10 diamonds. So it is a risk reward game. You have to choose your targets carefully and sneak this potato into their inventory with a punishment. So my first one isn't actually going to be give green 10 diamonds. I'm gonna do something maybe a little bit more strange. So one of the problems is that there's not a lot of space on this. So I'm just going to change it to HP, which means hot potato. Record your intro in different lang. In diff lang. So you've kind of got to use some text speech here. So this says, this is the hot potato. You have to record your intro in your next episode in a different language. I don't really mind what the language is, but I'm going to choose someone that isn't already speaking two languages. So someone that probably speaks just English and watch them as they have to do their entire introduction. So like the first 10 seconds, I'll clarify with whoever we get. They've got to record the thing in a different language. And of course, if it fails, I have to record my intro in a different language. So I wouldn't want to do that. That's a pretty difficult thing to do. It's, it'll be fun to laugh at them. So now we just have to find someone to potate. There's actually no one online right now. So I think the best thing we can do is head over to Hermitville and see what's occurring over there. But we're going to keep this potato on us until we get an opportunity. So I haven't actually had a look yet. 
what randomness and extreme things are we going to find in Hermitville today? Um, oh, well, Renbob's vacated the building. That's awesome. So it looks like he's now gone. He's just vamoosed, but the, the stream... You know, for, for a hippie that's all about the environment, he's left a lot of CO2 around. I think this is probably going to stick around for a long time, but at least a mark of his efforts were there. The dragon is covered... Oh, whoa. Whoa. This wasn't there before. The dragon's covered in snow. It's... <laughs> yeah, that's kind of uh, taken away some of the oomph of the dragon. So, it looks like Scar's giant plant now has a giant thunderstorm around it. Uh, he's playing with fire. Is he above me? And... Oh. Hold on. Hold on. Mumbo's now decided to give up. <laughs> There's a giant white flag of surrender. So I wondered what Mumbo was going to do because he hasn't done anything since the rocket took off. So he's just decided to give up. But at the same time, in very contradictory fashion, it looks like it's actually the tallest thing. Is it the build height here? No, it's not. It's definitely not up to build height. So Build off is not over quite yet. So, oh my goodness. We've got a giant thunderstorm with a couple of flowers out the <laughs> out the top of it. I'm not really sure what that's supposed to do, but it is definitely higher than my dragon. And this white flag is above my dragon. And Iskal is currently in last place. But that leaves the question, what do I do? I can't defeat a cloud with a ball of fire. Um... I thought the dragon would scare everyone off. Well, it clearly scared Mumbo into giving up. <laughs> but I need to think of a way to build my house a little bit taller. You know, maybe I could just build out here and just go round the side and end up out, out the back there. But I think, honestly, this is one of my favourite things that's happened on Hermitcraft. The build offers... Uh, it's just amazing. It's it, it Surprisingly, it looks very clean. It's got a... Wow, this is just a, it's just so cool. It looks like one of my build swap episodes. That's what this looks like except much better and bigger. So anyway, let's build the house up a little bit taller and maybe even get this dragon to fire something at Scar, you know, knock off the top of this hat or something. We need to scare him anyway. So let's do it. Wait, 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 wait. Actually, before we do that, I logged in the very next day. I was about to go and do the work to the base and this is there. Look, look, look at this. I, I can't leave this place for more than two minutes. Let's go and take a look because this changes my entire game plan. So Scar has got a giant cannon on a castle on top of the cloud. So that's why the cloud was there. And he's built up all the way to, to build limit. 255. Isn't that build height? <laughs> no. <laughs> He's nobody tells Scar that he's one short. Nobody tell him he's one short. Okay, <laughs> he probably doesn't know. I I think the only way to deal with this is a fireball. I was wondering, like a fireball wouldn't do much to a cloud, but it sure is. Oh wait, so he's got a cannonball there. Well, I think we can fire a, a fire a fireball and knock that cannon way out of place at the same time. Alright, so Scar's busy doing that. Let's start the time lapse and let's get this fireball on the road, shall we? We've got a lot of work to do, so we might as well start now. So this is the scene as it currently stands. Scar is on top of a cloud firing a cannon at my dragon and Iskal is lagging behind a little bit, but Mumbo has built the white flag above mine. Look how beautiful this looks, but we have got a lot of work to do. So let's take this in as it stands and then crack on with what we're going to be doing with our build. Basically, I want to make the house bigger, but I don't want to interrupt the build that I've already got, the dragon. I really just don't want to touch it. It's amazing. I don't want anything bad to happen to this precious little angel. So, I built the house around the dragon. It literally curves right round and goes straight up where it was, above Mumbo's flag and above 
Scar's build. So we're back on top, ladies and gentlemen, but we need to then go ahead and decorate all of it, add the windows and stuff. To be honest with you, that bit's just now a chore, but I like the way that it curves around the dragon. It doesn't interrupt it. The, the wing is around everything, and that was the main thing. But since Scar fired the first bullet, my, my dragon was defensive, and then he's gone on the offensive, so now we are going to give him a taste of his own medicine, and we're going to send a fireball straight at him. Now, I hate working with stained glass. I think it's my least favorite thing and I haven't got much experience doing it. I really kind of suck at doing this sort of thing. So this was a bit of a first for me. I'd never made any sort of fireball using stained glass or anything like that. The most I've ever done is a bit of smoke. So I think all in all, I did a pretty good job, even though it definitely isn't the best. But the fireball knocked the cannon off course, which then went straight through Mumbo's white flag of surrender. This is a kind of a no mumbo, you don't get to win and give up at the same time. So the cannonball has gone straight off course, straight away from the dragon where it was going, and the fireball is heading straight for Scar's face or cannon, wherever it's going. I think this looks really cool, and this is exactly why we have a dragon on top of our base, so that we can defend from attacks like that. So all in all, I think we made a pretty good move. It looks like I got the angles slightly wrong. <laughs> the mouth is down here, but the fireball is a little bit higher. So I may have messed that up, but we'll just pretend that the dragon raised its head to fire the fireball, and that's totally normal. What's not normal is the giant dabbing penguin. Since I did this time lapse and we knocked Scar's cannonball into Mumbo's white flag, Iskal has built a dabbing penguin on top of an iceberg, which is on top of his space station, which is on top of the moon, which is on top of a magnet, which is on top of the Eiffel Tower. What is going on? Uh, at least I've been fairly consistent with mine. <laughs> so it officially looks like all of us, with the exception of Mumbo, who has officially retired from the game, and this is why we've put this cannonball straight through his flag to show that he is he is officially surrendered, even though he did get back on top very briefly, the three of us, Iskow, Scar, and myself, are all at the same level. Meaning, that's pretty much the end of the build-off. Or is it? I think what we're gonna have to do is get together with Iskow and Scar in the next episode to work out who officially has won the build-off. But can we just please appreciate quite how insane this is, and how beautiful it is. I don't think anything like this will ever happen again by accident on the Hermitcraft server. It's absolutely incredible, and it's incredibly fun to fly around in as well, because of all the different laser beams and stuff that are going on. Possibly one of my favorite things that's happened this season. However, if we press tab for just two seconds, we can see two people online, Excise Zoom Avoid, and Mumbo Jumbolio, who is officially AFK. So I think we know who our target is, and I was hoping it was gonna be Mumbo, who our target is for the hot potato. I've still got it on me. Hot potato, record your intro in a different language. I can't think of anyone better who would have a hard time saying their introduction in another language than Mumbo Jumbo. Unless he's hiding a second language skill from us, I think this could be very, very funny. Now, seeing as he's AFK, I'm guessing he's in his farming area, which is why I'm heading over there through the nether. Here we are in his farming area. Seeing as that is the only farm online, I'm guessing he's somewhere up there. I can't actually see him. Is that on? Yep, there it goes. And what is in here? Ooh, mumbo jumbo plans. He's got a little table here. Concrete maker, iron farm, villager breeder, zero tick sugar cane. Oh, this is just his farm. Maybe we should add our own in here. Farm that gives Grian lots of diamonds. That seems like a really good plan to add to that list. So as long as he follows his own plan, we should be fine. So where is he? If he's not in there, he's not in the control room. And he's not there. Is that him? Yep, there we go. Oh, his head's on backwards. 
Mumbo Jumbo. When are you going to learn not to go AFK? So this is actually the first time that anyone's going to get potatoed. So hopefully he hasn't got a full inventory. Because if he's got a full inventory, this doesn't work. Ah, there we go. There's all his stuff. I have just broken a bit of glass here. So, wow, he's got loads of diamonds. He just carries diamonds on him. This is a really big insight into what Mumbo Jumbo carries around. He carries around a stack and a half of diamonds and some leather trousers. That's really weird. That's really, really weird. Okay, so we've got the potato. As long as this goes into his inventory, which it should, pop. And he hasn't noticed us because he's AFK. We're pretty much in the clear. So I'm so confident that he's going to be AFK for a long time. I'm pretty sure that counts as not being noticed. So what we're going to do is we're going to write down to explain the game because Mumbo Jumbo probably won't have seen the rules and everything. So I'm just going to explain to him what's going on. Wow, I was writing this book for so long that it's now nighttime. Okay, so here we go. Hi Mumbo, you have been potatoed. That means you have had the hot potato thrown in your inventory without you noticing. You guys already know this, but I'm just going to read it out anyway. This is a new game invented by me, the Green Menace. Since you have the hot potato, you must do the punishment on it. And your punishment is, in the next episode, you must do your introduction in another language. Approximately 10 to 20 seconds. Remember, these are very loose rules, so if he if he just does like the hello, my name is Mumbo, and welcome back to another Hermitcraft episode, that's fine. As long as he does that in another <laughs> in another language, I'll be happy. You could choose any language you want. Now you must get rid of the hot potato. To do this, you must sneak it into someone's inventory without them noticing. Here's the twist. You can write your own punishment on the potato for the hermit to do. For example, give me 10 diamonds. We went over this. However, if you are caught in the moment of potatoing someone, the punishment will backfire and you must perform the punishment and start over. If you fail, you must make a new punishment and find a new target. This game is really simple, I promise. And I want to keep it simple. I don't want there to be too many rules. So good luck. You can target any hermit, even the person who got you. Get creative, but be prepared for it to all go wrong. So... I want to keep the rules as minimal as possible, so hopefully this all makes sense. Now this book here is just to be handed out because it can be difficult to know exactly what's going on with a brand new game. So this isn't a rule book. Just so I'm clear, this isn't a rule book, this is just to explain to Mumbo who might not know what's going on. There we go. Wait, yep, I heard that pop, that means he's got it. Mission successful, the first potato wing has been done. And, well, it was pretty easy. But imagine how crazy this game's going to become when people start baiting each other to get potatoed, when people start filling their inventory with random junk so that they're protected. It's gonna, the tactics in this are gonna be quite insane. So, we made a brand new tag game, and the build-off is starting to come to a, a conclusion. That means we need to find something else to do. Please leave a comment down below if you have any ideas for what we should be doing on Hermitcraft next. However, there is one last thing that I want to do before we call this episode done, because X has informed me that he has split the Elytra course into two. Normal mode, which is GRian's fun Elytra course, <laughs> thanks for that, and reverse mode. So he took 2 minutes 47 plus 8 penalty, so it took him 2 minutes 55 to do it in reverse. So that means the full Elytra course, but backwards. I think we're going to have to try and set a better score than this because we're at the top here even though I managed to get the same <laughs> the exact same score twice and we got 15 Uh you know what it's not such a big deal that we lost our diamonds because we're getting them back 17 diamonds at least means I haven't got none left actually this is a really big deal because it means I can s officially sign up for Iskal's mini game which I wasn't able to do before because I've not got any diamonds you know, I should really just go mining, but I, it's just kind of boring at this point. Right, there we go. Signing up. Uh, I should uh, write the paper down. I'll be honest, I don't really know what I'm signing up for. I was elected to lead, not to read. <laughs> All right, so let's go and do this Elytra course backwards and see if we can beat XI Zuma Void's score. Three, two, one, go! We even got the ding to set us off. 
So we're going backwards. I know the course inside and out, so this shouldn't be too difficult as long as the world will load around us in time. So this is where I always end up getting hit. Come on. Yes, we made that through. If I can get a no-hit run on this, I will set the best score. Obviously, I won't know what the score is until the editing process. Now, this is going to be a tricky one. Ah, I just have to guess. Oh, it's not loading in. I have to guess. Woo. This is ten times harder when the world doesn't load in. I literally have to slow myself down because it won't load in. Ooh. The goal is just to beat X's score. I will probably have to redo this. Look at this. How am I supposed to do my elytra course at speed if I can't even see the elytra course? Through this hoop. Down here. Ah, that's another hit. Up. Down. Through the bamboo forest in Concorp. Oh, this is weird doing it this way. I have to... Ah! I have to know where my course is just blindly. Through here. Through the Quidditch hoop, which is over here. Through the grass, no, the leaves. We're doing well. And through this one, which is particularly difficult. Go down. Oh, no, we hit the floor. We hit the floor. Oh, this is a terrible run. This is a terrible run. But I have a feeling it might still be better than X's. Through here, through the ice. Ow, that's three hits. Down. Come on, load in! I can't see it! Come on! Come on! Come on! Oh, this is terrible. And under... Up... Oh, are you kidding me? Well, that 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 is it. That is... Four hits. That was a really awful, awful run. Because the world would not load in. And it made it pretty much impossible to do that at speed. However, I will write down the time when I know. Obviously, it's... You guys know what it is. Look! Woo! But I'm definitely going to do that again at some point. Maybe when there's not two people AFK at a farm somewhere because the server is unbelievably laggy. Anyway, that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching, as always. And I can't wait to see El Mumbo do his, <laughs> do his next introduction in another language. Although, remember, next episode he will be reading the book so it might be the episode after that he does the intro. I don't know how he's going to do it. Either one is fine. I don't really I don't really mind, but maybe he will read the potato first in his next episode and then the punishment will be the episode after. Either way, we all get our introduction in another language. I wonder what language he's going to choose. I hope he chooses a good one. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and good. Bye.